Hello guys, today I will be reviewing another one of my models. And this time it is the Carnegie Spinosaurus Articulus. It's a beautiful model. One of the one of my favorite Carnegie models I have. And I got this last year, I got this last summer um from the Kalana Zoo in Ohio. Uh when I was visiting my family there in Ohio, my relatives um there in Ohio. And they brought me to the the Kalana Zoo and and it was really cold there. I got to see a lot of cool animals I never seen before. And I was also able to pick up some cool models like the, the like the Spinosaurus. Carnegie Spinosaurus. Which I got there. And alright, so let's talk about Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus Arterpigus was a member of large uh third part dinosaurs called the Spinosaurus. Spinosaurids, um, its name means spine lizard, because there's tall spines that were characterized by the Spinosaurus itself. And Spinosaurus were very unique, because these uh, these dinosaurs were actually the first known dinosaurs to actually be semi-aquatic. So these animals actually spend most of the time in the water, rather than on, rather than on land, like other mutant dinosaurs. So it it would have had many features of an aquatic animal like red feet, and also and also huge claws and a crocodile snout, which, which enabled it to survive an aquatic environment. And the spinosaurs needed these um these features to survive because they lived at they lived at the, at the time when the world was becoming to be mostly covered in water, when the ocean waters were were about were rising, and much of the world were about were uh, being covered in water, and they needed to uh, uh, to adapt. The spinosaurs needed to adapt to an aquatic environment because of the change. Um, and spinosaurus was one of these dinosaurs, and it was the very last of the of the of the spinosaurids, and of course the largest. It's actually the largest known theropod dinosaur. It was 60 feet long in length. Which was much larger than T. Rex. T. Rex only reached lengths of 40 to 42 feet, but Spinosaurus reached lengths of 60 feet, which was huge. Um, probably about the size, uh, I don't know, about 60 feet long, which is huge. Much larger than other Tyrannosaur dinosaurs, I mean, Therabod dinosaurs. But what makes this creature unique is because of this long snout, crocodile like snout, very similar to that of a crocodile. And this is very similar in carnivorous aquatic animals. This is all common in carnivorous aquatic animals. I mean. So, and, you, and I, if I compare this with my walking with dinosaurs T. Rex model I got, uh, from the Orlando Spectacular, you, you see that it's very different from the, even the Spinosaurus. Because you can see the T. Rex has a much more broader, um, thinner mouth. I mean, a bulkier mouth. Draw and it's much shorter and blunter. Uh, but Spinosaurus is very long and elongated, which made which made it, which gave it a much weaker bite force than Tyrannosaurus Rex. So it didn't need a weaker because it didn't need a strong bite force. Because all it needed to do was just harpoon its this huge neck into the water and grab a fish and just like kill it and then he's not around. But a lot of a lot of um, people are wondering how does how does fish feed such a large animal like Spinosaurus? But we're not talking about like small fish, like minnows. These fish were huge. Some of the size of cars, much bigger than today. It was a it was a very thriving environment. There are rivers and swamps there and, and in fact um Africa was in fact a a a, a vast waterway. Because of the flooding, because of the rising waters, and there are uh, mangroves and lakes on the shore of a vast ocean. So uh, many dinosaurs were able to thrive, and other organisms were able to thrive in this habitat. It was pretty much a paradise for aquatic animals. There was a variety of large animals living in this environment. It's just amazing. It was just an amazing ecosystem, and Spinosaurus was was probably at the top of the so I one of the top predators because they're larger predators that that fit on the um the large herbivorous dinosaurs rather than than fish like Spinosaurus did. So 
Now let me talk about how Spinosaurus was discovered and the inaccuracies of this model. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to make this quick because I don't want it to say, um, you know what, um, that it didn't, that something went wrong again because I'm really afraid it's going to happen again. It's really frustrating. Let me start all over again. So, um, the first Spinosaurus specimen was discovered by a paleontologist called, named, something Stromer. Um, I forgot the name. I forgot his first name, but his last name is Stromer. So he was a German paleontologist who set off an expedition to the to the Sahara Desert in Egypt to to um, search for evidence of prehistoric mammals. But instead, he he found the the specimen of Spinosaurus of Rittmicus and other animals living at the at the environment of North Africa. So. He found the lower jaw Spinosaurus and these huge spines that supported its, its dorsal sail, which was used as a as probably an intimidation. It it would have it, it would have had these huge maybe would have had these huge eye spots, which would have um made itself look bigger and scare away larger predators. Because even though Spinosaurus was were not larger predators, because even though Spinosaurus was a carnivore was also a prey for other larger, more successful creatures living at the time. And it still had many ways of defending itself from larger predators. So, um, so, and it was found the, the remains of a, a sauropod called a dinosaurus in the skull of a foot of crocodile. But then something horrible happened. Um, the, the museum was bombed a few days later by the, by, uh, the Nazis in World War II, because, because of the, because, you know, the, because the skeletons were found in 1912, which was during World War, II, World War II, and the Nazis bombed the museum. The, the bones were being displayed, which was horrible for Stromer, because his life, because his life possession was ruined. And Spinosaurus was lost for many years. And has uh, and has become a mystery for m many years, and it was one of those mysterious dinosaurs that people don't know about. But luckily, this year they found a new specimen of Spinosaurus rectus. It's actually the known, the only known complete skeleton of Spinosaurus. Um, so now we actually know what an animal looked like, and this model is actually very similar to that, because it has a short legs, huge claws, and crocodile-like mouth that were all featured in the new skeleton. But even though this was made before the new skeleton, it's still very similar, which is really weird. Um, yeah. And, but there's one, a feature that was, sorry guys, I have to make this quick, because I'm really worried that's going to happen again. So, uh, yeah, and there's one feature in the uh, new specimen, made by, made by a ecologist, um, Paul Serena, which is one of my favorite paleontologists. And it actually has a small gap in the sail. Which I believe is actually an injury because there's no need for the Spinosaurus to have a gap in its sail when it actually won't give it no use. So I believe that's just an injury that the animal had. So uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this model. Very beautiful model. I recommend it. I love the greenish color and white creamy body. And yeah. So bye guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this video and see you in my next video. Okay, and have a Merry Christmas, guys. Christmas is coming up. Yeah, and I'm going to get some new models, so I can't wait to review those. So bye, guys. Uh, have a Merry Christmas, and see you in my next video. Bye.